Hey, you're watching Impossible Color, and I'm back with another video in the before and after series. So I found this really interesting rock formation on a beach uh, on the Washington coast. And because the sky was quite bright, it created some strong shadows in the rocks below. If I expose for the sky, this would be almost completely black. And if I exposed for the rocks, the sky would be almost completely bright. So what I did was I took a, a shot that was somewhere in the middle. And you can see from the histogram here that uh, a large portion of the image is well exposed. And just barely this one is uh, it's leaning towards the dark side, but it's just it's just barely inside there. It's not clipping out too much. So let's see what we can do. This is the before straight out of camera. And this is the after. Quite a dramatic change there. Most of my editing usually takes place in Photoshop, but in the case of uh, where the exposure is the primary concern, Adobe Camera Raw did a wonderful job. And that's why you should always shoot in Camera Raw format and not JPEG because you won't be able to reclaim all that detail. So you can see that the shadows were brought up incredibly and the highlights that were clipping out in the sky were brought down almost all the way. A little bit of increase in the blacks, but if you increase your shadows a lot, you don't want your blacks to go up a lot as well because then you're gonna lose your tonal range. I also brought the orange down to just to help some of this color pop out in the rock here and in the saturation area you can see I also saturated it and also some yellows and basically with the blue of the sky I wanted that offset with a nice complementary golden yellowy orange it just created a nice relationship between the two by increasing the yellow in the luminance tab and also the orange helps draw that out even more so let's have a look at it in Photoshop so this is the before and this is the after and step by step I'll go through what I did the first thing I did was the color balance and I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit closer so you can see the changes more dramatically you can see in the shadows there's a lot more it's kind of leaning more towards the purple side there's more red and blue added to that a little less of that sort of a warm yellowy color except for this area of course gives a little bit more color depth a little less washed out looking and so the color balance is basically your global changes the entire image per category of shadow midtone or highlight but I also like more local adjustments based on the actual color and that's when you do the selective color adjustment you can do any adjustment layer just by going down to this little circle divided in two down here so you can find the selective color there and you can find the color balance there you can do them in the opposite order if you like but i kind of like a more top-down approach so let's turn those colors off and back on The layer above it is just a sharpen using the high pass filter going to filter other and high pass and my default setting for that is three depending on the image I might go a little bit up or a little bit down you don't want to go super exaggerated or you could end up with this strong halo and almost kind of like an embossed bubbly look and it can look pretty bad you'll notice that I didn't apply 
the sharpness everywhere. I didn't want my clouds and my whole background to be super sharp. So what I did was I created a mask and I basically just painted in white where I want to show, black where I didn't want it to show. And I could also turn on, if you click uh, on your keyboard, the backslash, you can get a preview in red of the areas that are affected. And as a final stage for this image, I did a little bit more of a color tweak after the sharpen just to warm it up slightly. So if I was to take all of these layers, hold down shift to select them all, click on this little arrow, I'm going to add them to a new group from layers. I'm going to call that after. We'll just rename the first layer before. And there we go before and after. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions about my techniques, I'd be happy to help you out. Just add them to the comment section below. And please share this video with your friends and click subscribe. See you next time on Impossible Color.